Now, I want to go ahead and introduce our next presenter. Now, this is Greg, Greg Capra. He is the president and CEO of Pristine Trading, a leading online educational service for active, self-directed traders and investors. Greg founded Pristine in 1994 and has written two seminal books on trading and investing. The first one, Tools and Tactics for the Master Day Trader, and Trading Tools and Tactics, Reading the Mind of the Market. He is also a six-time Money Show Live Trading Challenge winner. So without any further delay, I want to go ahead and introduce Greg Capra. And go ahead, Greg. You're all set for the presentation. Let's talk a little bit about um, myself, Christine, get a little background, and then we'll get right, in, right into it here. As Christian said, uh, I founded Christine in 1994. Um, I've written uh, several books on the, what I do, how I do it, um, won six uh, trading challenges, real, real money, front of live audiences. Um, it was always fun, great. A little, um, it's a little tense, you know, you know, doing it in front of everybody and explaining it. Um, but uh, you know that that's that's what everybody wants to see, and that's you know what we do when it's available. Uh, we've been doing this; tw it'll actually be 20 years in, sept in September that we've been educating investors and, and traders. And as the slide says, I mean we've had head fund managers, uh, market makers, which are always interesting. I mean, when you know, when I started this, you know, back in the, the mid 90s, and used to do um, you know these. Uh, sessions that were that would last even a week there were more mentorships and you know market makers and specialists would come and 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 sit with me and and go through things it was just amazing how much they really didn't know um, you know I mean they, they work off of uh, order flow uh, they know very little about about technicals but uh, you know the people that I that I worked with they were they were good smart people and obviously they were willing to you know invest in education to do what they uh, did e even better uh, and, you know we've had people come to us that absolutely knew absolutely nothing I mean that's where I started I knew absolutely nothing about the markets total total confused you know and uh, you know searching for the holy grail as as, as it said you know looking for that that secret uh, we've had lots of our competition uh, come to us, uh, you know, to, to attend our classes, and a lot of our students have actually become uh, instructors themselves, and it's a, a great testament to uh, to Pristine and what we do. Uh, we've been voted best education in two, uh, 2012 and 2013 over at uh, Trader Planet. I'll show you that in in a second. Here, um, if if you're interested, and if you're on Facebook. Um, we actually have two Facebook pages. Uh, one is, uh, I guess, I think what they call a, a fan page, and we post current events on there, and, and sometimes some some charts and comments and, and so on. A lot about our, our free workshops, um, and then we have a uh, our what's called our, our, our group, and um, you know, it, while it's a private group, anybody can join. Uh, you just have to you know, ask to join, and you know, of course, we give you access to it, but. Um, you know, I post charts there. I answer questions. Um, sometimes my son Kurt does does the same, or any of our our, our moderators will, will will make posts there. Um, but you know, as good as that is, we have a lot of our students that post their trades there and and, and their own comments and where they think a certain market is going, and you know whether that's um, e minis or Apple computer. Or a currency pair. They're 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 trading them all because you know what we what we do is applicable to whatever it is that that you want to trade, and I'll show you several examples of that in, in different in different instruments. So, if you're on Facebook or you, you you join Facebook, you know look look us up there. There's actually links to these pages on uh, our our home site there where you can you can get right into them. Um, we we have. Uh, you know, YouTube channel where you know you you can see videos of trades that were posted in in the chat room. I mean, you can see them from our website as well. But you know, if you're on YouTube, you'll find Christine there as well. Uh, the disclaimer: uh, you can lose money doing this. We all know that. Um, have to point it out. There, there's risk involved, and uh, you know, 
well, big boys and girls, you you realize that I just have to get that aside and you know let's move on to what we're here for. All right, as I said, you know we have won best education two years in a row. Um, last last for this year for 2000 actually 2013 we were voted uh, best chat room. Uh, that's where our moderators post live, live uh, trades, explain them uh, in real time, targets, stops, entries, uh, win or loss, all, all documented every day. Um, if you're familiar with the, the chat software we use, it's a little different than, than this, but uh, each, there's a documents folder in there, and every day um, those trades that were called uh, are posted there. Um, you know, so you can see it and, and, and keep track of what we're doing and see if we're making money or not. Um, chart of the Week newsletter, that's something that I write. It um, comes out on Mondays. It's, it's, a, it's a free service. We have multiple free services uh, just by joining our community. Uh, but I, I write about different uh, stocks or uh, something happening in the market, uh, market timing, uh, a different, uh, different type of setup or play. I mean, I've been writing this for, for years. Um, you know, uh, it's widely followed. You can, you know, just log into the community. It's free and, and, and read that. You know, everything we do is, is educational. And, uh, you know, a lot of people say that our educational stuff is better than what they've paid for at other places. Now, a little history about uh, where I started and came from. And, I, you know, I, I began studying the markets. Um, and then trading them was back in the late 80s. Um, this was before the internet days, before the uh, powerful, great software systems that are available today. Um, just by opening up uh, your internet browser, you know, or downloading a software, and it didn't work that way. It, it was, uh, you know, DOS-based systems, downloading data. Um, over a 2400 baud modem on a 286 computer. Um, and it was all a big mystery to me uh, and how to figure out how, how to do this, how to make money in the markets. Um, and, you know, looking for that, that, that secret, that holy grail, um, I went all over the place from, you know, looking at some basic stuff. You know, if you're familiar with the Edwards and McGree. Edwards and McGee uh, book, you know, it's like a gigantic book on, on patterns and, um, you know, t ton of information, you know, lots of charts in there going back, you know, many, many years, you know, a lot of good stuff in there. Um, and then, you know, mo moved on to the more esoteric type of things, you know, looking for uh, the sure thing, the holy grail, as the slide says, uh, Elliott waves, uh, GAN squares. Uh, Fibonacci retracements, circles, uh, cycles, uh, trend lines, and all the indicators and such, and w and went through that. And and you know what? You know, after some time dealing with that, you know, scratching my head, and I'm like, you know what? This is just this is just hocus pocus. That's the way it seemed to me. It really wasn't any real consistency in it. Um, and the questions as well: Why do prices stop? in these places at times. Um, and other times, prices go through them like they're, like they're not there. Am I, am I doing it wrong? Uh, am I drawing the lines in the wrong place? Uh, you know, is there different settings? Um, you know, just spending a lot of time trying to, trying to figure that out, um, as, as most people do. And I came to the conclusion, you know what, I, I can't figure it out. Not, not to where I could do this with any consistency. Um, so, you know, I, I need to find another way. And, you know, I tried the more simpler uh, technical analysis approach, you know, with the different indicators and um, trend lines and the bands and, uh, and so on. And, and, and again, it was like, well, which ones? What combination of them? Uh, are the lines in the right place? Do I draw it from the extremes or the, clo or the closes? Um, and now I can change the settings on all of these. So the, the combinations are, are endless. And then, you know, of course, if you change the time frame or you change uh, a different instrument that you're trading, even if you back tested these things, they, they don't line up. 
and I, you know, was back to the drawing board, scratching my head. What is it? Um, how does you know? How does it? How does this work? You know, so it's not all confusing. Well, was going back to basics. You know, it, 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 the light bulb began to come on when I took all the lines, all the spaghetti screens off the chart and, and just focused on what mattered. Uh, pri price, you know, volume, uh, support, resistance, the trend. Um, I do look at market internals. Some of our instructors aren't uh, uh, that into the internals themselves. They're just purists of, of just following uh, price. Um, but you know it's about keep, keeping it simple and and it not being so complex uh, that you know you're you're just more confused than you were when you started out trying to figure out what 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 direction to go in. Well, one of the things that that I realized you know uh, through trading myself was that and and we all know this that this is a tremendous amount of emotion that that's involved in, in what we do. And I'm sure some of, some of you have had the experience of being in a position, especially if you, when you're starting out, being in a position, um, it going against you. If you even knew what a stop was, or, you know, you didn't take it, you were in denial, it'll, it'll, it'll come back. Uh, and prices continue to go down and, and eventually it gets to a point where um, you are totally, totally convinced um, that prices are probably going to zero and you, you just better get out. And so, you know, you press that button. Um, you know, when I started out, there was no button. You picked up the phone. And not shortly after that, uh, prices bottomed out, you know, a lot of times. And after doing that a few times, you know, I thought to myself, you know what, this feels really bad. <laughs> you know, how do I get in touch, you know, with, with those feelings so that they, they uh, how can they be useful? And it came to the realization that these price patterns are a reflection of what other, other traders are thinking, you know, e even myself. And what does that look like when, when you sell the bottom or you buy the top and, and so on? So, you know these price patterns they guide our our thinking this is this is the you know my approach now how you know we approach the markets and uh, and we define those pictures right what what does a picture of buying look like or a picture of selling or even uncertainty one one of the 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 most important things about trading and or investing is is understanding when to we call sit on your hands you know, do absolutely nothing uh, there isn't always an opportunity in the market you know to be in a trade you know uh, if you have a well defined plan as to what to do you've defined your method your picture um, your way of getting into the market someone else could have a totally different way and it works for them but you have to define what your way is and so for us you know it's about defining these pictures with within a trend because that's going to increase the odds of follow through that last point, money management is, is a key to psychology. Um, you know, you may think, you know, you need a, a trading coach. I used one years ago, re really good. Um, but without a method, without uh, a, a way of uh, doing this in a, in a systematic way, um, you know, the trading coach is going to help you very much. But money management is so tied to psychology and a lot of us when we're starting out because we're so focused on the money, um, there is a tendency to take on too large of positions or not understand position sizing and, 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 ma and managing the money in a proper way. So you might be thinking that, hey, there's something wrong with your thinking, but you know, hey, if you got the money management part down, um, you know, you would do so much more better, and then actually be able to utilize someone like a, a trading coach when it would make sense to do it. Right? And so, by having a method, it, you be continue with that method, you keep track of it, and and confidence and patience begins to build in that, and eventually, you know, you get the discipline to follow it. But it's it's all a process, and it does and it does take time. So with the candles, and you know, what what changed what changed for me? Well, 
you know, I studied all the candle patterns, all the names, um, and eventually I came to the realization, you know what, I don't need to know any of these names. Um, I really don't need to know these patterns as they're, as they're defined. Uh, I realize that there's no advanced, really advanced candlestick patterns, but there is, as it says, a deeper understanding of how prices move. And by understanding the price movement in connection with the emotions and what other traders are, are thinking, what is their expectations, and in turn, what are they likely to do next, um, putting that together with you know, the other basic support, resistance, trend, and so on. Um, it all starts to make sense. It, 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 uh, it did for me, and it, it did for the, you know, the thousands of uh, investors and traders that have come to Pristine over the years. Uh, so looking at indicators with these candles uh, really didn't make any difference, because if I looked at an indicator and it said prices were overbought, many times I saw the prices continue to go up. So overbought was a very subjective, misleading piece of information. And one indicator could be overbought, another one wasn't. I changed the settings. Is it overbought? Is it an overbought? I have no idea looking at this, you know, because it's too confusing. You know, overbought's supposed to mean it can't go higher, it should pull back, but yet it continues to go up and vice versa. So, um, you know, to me, you know, the use of indicators is have to be so blunt, but useless and and, to and, and more confusing than the, any kind of help you could ever get from them. So let's start with some basics here with these candles. Um, as I said, it's not about knowing all of these different patterns. It's about knowing that there's a few candles um, and they're basic. You got you know green ones and red ones. How big are they? Or are they smaller? Or are they larger in range? The larger ones should be more powerful uh, than the smaller ones, but in reality, they're just telling you that there's momentum is increasing or it's decreasing. Uh, with the the smaller candle bodies, what, what's up? What's on the upper right there? It tells me momentum is slowing down, and because these have tails on the top and bottom, uh, it also communicates that there's some indecision uncertainty and, and confusion there because unlike the ones on the upper left, uh, the ones on the right have these long tails or wicks, whatever, however you like to call them. Um, so, and the, the narrow range tells me that momentum is slowed down and no one's really in control here. You know, the buyer, the buyers are the sellers. Now, what, what we call a topping tail, uh, you know, in candlestick terms, it, it could be a hammer, or an inverted hammer, or a shooting star, or some other potential names, depending on whether it was going up or down. But you know, we just say hey, there was a tail on the top. Let's keep this really simple. Right? So, sellers have taken control here. Uh, let me say, I say, what did that look like before it became a topping tail? Well, it looked like that green bar up there, and and now it's got this tail on the top and tells me that for some reason sellers have taken control here. Now, not all topping tail bars mean prices are going to go down. So we've got to look at this, you know, and have a deeper understanding of it, but let's just stick with the basics right here. Um, this bottoming tail bar tells me that buyers have taken control at, the, at this point in time. Um, you know, it, what did it look like? Well, it could it could have been that green bar at some point, or the, or the red one, uh, but buyers came in and pushed it back up and left this tail on the bottom. And it says, well, where did these occur within the trend? That's going to make a big difference. So the location of this bar is going to make a huge difference in its reliability um, as far as whether it's going to follow through. Right. Now. As we look at these candles and we think about the typical way um, we learned or you have learned about candle patterns and the, and the different and the different names different names 
we see bottoming tails, topping tails, reversals, whether they're, you want to you know, call them engulfing or piercing patterns or dark cloud covers. Um, you know, it's the same message. Right? It's the same message as, as the one bar reversal. Right? Th th this, this is just, what time frame are you looking at? Right? So if I compress, if I compress prices, right, a higher a higher time frame, that two bar reversal, very possibly is going to look like either a bottoming tail or a topping tail. Now the ones on the right. Um, now we've got these three bar reversals here and they might be called morning stars or evening stars or doji morning stars or evening stars all really you know uh, interest, interesting names and, and, and lead to beliefs about what's, what's possible but to really understand this is it, it's just about uh, the time frame that we're looking at now you'll see all of these different pictures, but in reality, they're all the same. It just means that prices were going in one direction, momentum slowed down at some point, and they went in the other direction. Right. So, and I say this because once you learn about candles and you see a particular pattern or you're taught a particular set of candles to have a certain meeting, you know, you get hung up on that and saying, well, you know, those bottoming tail bars, they really work out well. That's what I'm looking for. And, and then you see this two bar reversal and you're like, well, that's not the one that I really un, was told to look for. And so you don't, you don't take the trade and yet it continues to go up. So understanding this is about um, the different time frames and how that changes the picture of the candles um, is, real, is really helpful. You're not just stuck on looking for a particular pattern and, un and understanding that they can mean the same. And here, here's, an, here's an example of that. Um, this is uh, the Qs, right? the, the ETF for the NASDAQ 100. And this chart is probably about a week old. Um, and you can see the five minute chart on the left there. And it's got a bottoming tail. You see where the stars um, mark the same area. Well, the two-minute chart was a two, was a two-bar reversal. So, you know, this leads to uh, an, an, another uh, you know a, a, another stumbling block, if you will, or or, cho or choice that we all have to decide on, and, and can uh, you know get caught up into what what's right. Well. Some traders think, well, what, what time frame do I need to look at? You know, and, and you're looking for your particular candle pattern that you like, and you don't see it on the time frame that you, that you like, so you change the time frame. You go, oh, there's my picture. And you, so you start looking at that time frame. And then another, and it's a different day or a, diff, a different instrument, and the picture isn't there, but you find it on another time frame. Or maybe you're, you're even looking at things like tick charts or, uh, you know, a volume, in, you know, incorporated into the candle. There's so many different combinations. Um, so now you start looking at different types of charts. You start looking at different time frames, looking for that particular picture that, you know, that's that's the money. And before you know it, you've got so much on the screen that your head is spinning. Right? So if I can understand that this picture means the same as the other picture, well, I can choose my time frame and I understand what is going on here and I combine that with my other concepts, support, resistance trends, and so on, and hey, I, I can simplify this to where um, it, it's pretty easy to uh, analyze this information and, and come to a decision as to uh, what I should do. Now, what made the difference? Well, as, as I mentioned earlier, a lot of it was realizing that these patterns were a reflection of what you and I and everybody else were thinking and, and, and what they were, were going to do. So on the left there, I've got you know, what we'd call normal or obvious type reversals, and they're, and they're fine. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with it. But when the addition of that shocked expectations were incorporated in, into the plan and, you know, and, and seeing that, the odds of a setup working out without being part of a shakeout 
You know, we've all had those trade setups where you get in and uh, it rattles around and all of a sudden, you know, uh, it, it hits your stop and, and then it goes in the direction that, you know, you thought it would. Well, by incorporating and understanding, right, these, these shock patterns, or these shocked expectations, you know, your odds of getting caught in that type of situation uh, decreases dramatically. So. When I, when I see this BOF that says breakout failure, it was an attempt to go higher and it came back in again. And it clearly tells me sellers took control, right? they, they knocked the buyers down. In addition, traders bought that breakout. They're now holding losses. And when we're holding losses, the biggest thing we want to do is get out of that loss and get our money back. Right? And not not a, not incur a bigger loss. So, pattern patterns like this increase the odds that um, they're going to go in the direction that the pattern is saying. So, uh, a breakout below the bottom one, a breakout failure above a base, and then a, a, a bar a breakdown below the base. Um, you know, traders are caught. You know, the one all the way to the bottom left there. You got that bottoming tail within the base. It went down. It looked like a big red candle. Uh, prior to becoming that green bottoming tail bar. It tells me the traders thought it was going to go down. Some traders were shorting it thinking it was going to go down. Um, and by doing that, even though even the ones that, this, this could be uh, a pattern in which it had been previously in an uptrend, right? And prices went down, longs got shaken out, and the effect of that is to reduce the potential supply as prices go up because as that that bar was red and going down, some of the longs are going to say, hey, this trade is, is over. It's not working out. Let me kill it. So then as it begins to go higher again, it's like relieving the potential selling pressure that there would be. Um, and the one on the, the middle right there. It's, it's, it, the psychology of it is the same in that it, it was going down. And, th and this could be what we call a, a climactic buy setup, meaning it's really gone down a lot. It's extended to the downside, and it has that last gasp, break to the break lower, and then reverses back up again. Um, great setup for uh, a counter trend trade. And, and the upper right, it's just a little different depending on the time frame you're looking at, but it's the same thing as the middle right. It's just a little bar uh, in between the, the red bar and the green bar. You know, the message is all the same. So here in this slide we have a, on the upper right, we have a, a breakdown. Prices are breaking lower. I've got this big red candle. Right? Traders, are, traders, you know, shorting breakdowns, you know, breakdown patterns do work. You know, we have one one uh, you know trader moderator in the room. That's all he does is breakouts and breakdowns. Makes money virtually every month. Um, it's not every, not every day, but does really well. Um, and so now think about what what are those traders thinking now as it's become a bottoming tail? Well, you're getting the message here. Right? The break the trader selling the breakdown are caught. Now it's a bottoming tail. If prices could get above the top of that base, odds are they're going to go up. Now, can you imagine if it's extended to the downside or a higher time frame is in alignment with that? Odds are it's going to pop higher. And if it was in an uptrend, maybe it just started a new uptrend and it's starting to move up and they had this little shakeout type of bottoming tail, odds are it's going to go up. Right. I want on the lower left there. Right. It a b big wide range bar. That plus WRB means a bullish wide range bar. Prices are moving up, and now it's turned into a topping tail. Well, if I can find that picture, on um, I'm watching a stock or a particular market. As I said, it doesn't matter what you trade. This could be a currency pair. It could be the S and P E minis, and they've been going up and up, and and now they move above those prior bars and it becomes a topping tail bar, longs are caught. Odds are it's going to go lower under the right scenario. I said it's extended higher. Or maybe it's even in a downtrend and has moved up to resistance. You see we put we put these 
different setups, pictures together with the other concepts that I'm mentioning. Okay? RBI, red bar ignored. Right? It's the same as a bottoming tail. If there was a little bar in between it, it'd be called a morning star. Whatever the, whatever the name is, in reality, who cares? Now, this is one of my favorite setups. I call them money bars because the odds of it not working out, continuing to move higher, are extremely slim. Correction bars. Um, important point. Right? It happens after the start of a move. It's not, it's not a move that's been continuing from some time. So an initial move out of a consolidation. We're all looking for that pullback. If you if you like Fibonacci's, okay, that's your thing. You're probably looking for a retracement to that 50% retracement level, or you you like pullbacks to the 20 period moving average. Well, a lot of times they don't pull back after the initial move. Well, this type of money bar or correction bar, as I call it, will give us that entry. I'm going to speed it up a little, guys. Voids. What does a void mean? Well, years ago I thought to myself, why? Why do prices sometimes trend with the same setup and other times they don't? Well, because there was no reference point of support or resistance to the left. Um, you know, many believe that it's the moving averages that stop price. It, it's the Fibonacci retracement level. It's the trend line. It's the GAN line. It's this line or that line or the Bollinger Bands. Sometimes comes into play if enough people are looking at it like a 200 period moving average, but prices react to prior prices. And when there's nothing there to the left, for example, a gap, prices tend to trend toward higher odds of trending, trending toward the next reference point. So as this shows, this sideways consolidation over time moves away from any congestion area. It begins to break down. That tells me it's going lower. I look for my setup, in this case, the money bar. Here's an example of that. Looks a little bit different. Um, but the consolidation, initial move, initial move down below the base is an attempt to go up. You get the topping tail. It could be a two bar reversal. Right? I'm just showing you a topping tail. It could be a green bar up and a red bar back down. The message is the same. Where's the next reference point to the left? Well, it should go much lower. That gives me a targeted area. Get in, manage. This, this is my highest odds setup at the open. Um, trading the open is tricky because you know what every you know the market's opening and you know maybe you're trading gaps. A lot of people who have different you know uh, you know depending on what they're looking at what they're trading. Any, anyway, it's you know you got you let a little bit of trading go on. Well, this type of shock pattern is the most reliable thing that I've seen trading around the open. Sometimes it's right at the open, and if, you tr if you're trading uh, Forex or some E-minis, it, it could happen you know, a little bit before you know, the, where the volume really starts coming in. Um, but it's this immediate reversal where it attempts to go in one direction, immediately goes in the, in the other direction. Traders are caught. There's a shock there. You know, it says, we got you. Right? What are they going to do? They're going to go in the other direction. Here it is in a stock, MasterCard, with a bottoming tail. You know, so it's a different variation, but still, you know, they're caught, and it's going to go in the other direction. Now, if I can combine and or have this picture in combination, say, with a higher time frame, that suggests that price is going to go up as well, the odds increase in my favor that much more. Here's another one, JP, JP Morgan. Uh, Tempted to go down in the, in the first five minutes of trading, immediately reverse back up, up. You buy it above the high of that that green bar, put a stop a few cents below, manage it. See which way it's going to go. It should go up. How you manage it, where you're going to sell. And these are all the other factors that come into being part of your trading plan. It's a gap strategy. Uh, we are big on gaps in, in our chat rooms. Um, 
you know, training them every, every morning and go through a, the gap list and screen out the best of what we believe is the best of the best. Um, but the shock element to it, and that's a daily chart on the, up, on the upper uh, left there, gapping above the high of that red bar, obvious cell setup right there. Um, and the upper right hand chart there is a 15 minute chart. It gapped above the intraday resistance and it had been going down into the end of the day. So there was this selling pressure into the end of the day where the resistance is over there to the left prices have gapped above it. You know, the simple concept, what was resistance should become support. Prices are pulling into it. That's where I'm going to look to be a buyer. Lower left hand chart, there's the setup. In this case, was a break, was a breakout. Now, so here here we have here we have another gotcha kind of setup. It, it gapped up and and reversed there, and it was it was retesting a prior high. Now, this could be a great setup in of itself. And that bottoming tail on the lower left, and it says same as a two bar reversal. That could be a great setup in of in itself. Um, and that. Where I had two bar reversals, same as a, a topping tail, right? And the money bar. Those, those are these are all setups in of themselves. But now, if I take a higher time frame, in this case here, you have the weekly chart. That green star is there at the bottom. There was an initial move off of the low. That bottoming tail bar on the lower left there. It's happening after an initial move. Right, the gotcha up at the top is where prices are coming up into the higher time frames resistance after prices have begun to move down. The one in the middle of the chart, two bar reversal, same as a topping tail money bar. It's happening after the initial start of a move lower up at a higher time frame resistance. This is what puts the odds in your favor. Now, I have got a three bar reversal. This is same as a bottoming tail bar. It's the same thing. It's just depending, you know, the time frame I'm looking at. In this case, it's, it's a three bar reversal and it was a little breakdown, hit support and comes back up again. Right. Says prices are going to go up. Well, I've been showing you three bar reversals, two bar reversals, one bar reversals. Well, here's a bottoming tail bar. It didn't work. You, know, you say, well, Greg, well, why didn't that one work? That's what you've been showing me. Well, higher time frame is up at resistance. So a bullish candle in a lower time frame could be your worst possible entry point because it's not in alignment with the higher time frame. And you see that three bar reversal there on the lower time frame is a bottoming tail bar on the higher time frame. We need to not only take this high odds pattern and understanding that it's connected to trader emotions and expectations but we have to combine that with what's the trend? And not only what is what is the trend in the time frame that I want to trade it, well, what's the trend and, and where are prices in location to prior resistance or support on a higher time frame? Now, as we put all of these things together into the method that we that we use, they give us high probability setups that put the odds in our favor. Um, that being said, of course, we always have we always have stops uh, in case they don't work to to minimize whatever possible loss there might be. Right? To do this without a stop loss would, would be foolish. You know, that eventually you know you're going to lose you're going to lose your money. Right? All right, I got a few minutes here. Um, <clears throat> Pristine and Lightspeed work together. Um, if you have an account with Lightspeed or open up an account with Lightspeed, um, you know, great commissions, platforms. Um, if you're a pristine student, or you, you know, you open up your account because of pristine, you get a dedicated support team. Right? Lightspeed is, is um, you know, they're voted the best broker for active traders. You know, they're big, um, you know, and, and getting some personalized attention uh, is what you get as you know being part of pristine um, it just says you get the pristine day trader letter free every day which you know has our, our gap uh, focus list in there market commentary um, 
you know, you can, you can contact one of our counselors there to, to get a look at that. Um, but if you're if you're interested in opening up an account with virtually the best commissions out there, you know, contact Joe. That you see his email address. There's the phone numbers there. Um, Christine.lightspeed.com. Um, if you have an account, you open up an account there. You call up a counselor and say, Hey, I'm on Lightspeed. You can get 25% off of your off of your course. You get the newsletter for free, um, and you know anybody that joins our community, you get our our, our free lessons, the videos. So you know we, we give you the trade of the week and a recap of what's happened in the in the trading room every week. Um, you know, so there's lots of great lots of great free information that we offer, regardless whether you know you get education with us or you trade through Lightspeed. But if you do create through Lightspeed, you know, you can get that education um, at a much low, lower cost and get some extra um, things along with that. Um, and now, ra rather than, you know, give you an offer here to, to buy something, um, even at a discount because you're, you're, you're here, what we'd rather do here is say, you know what, come see what we do every day for free for a month. Keep track of it. See if what we teach makes money. So we're going to give you free access for a month to our chat room, this pristine method chat room. That was voted the best chat room out there on the internet. Um, just contact counselor at pristine.com. Tell them I want access to the chat room free for a month. They'll send you your, your access. Get in there. Listen for a while. I would suggest not trading, listen, understand what's going on um, before you act on anything, ask questions, everything will be explained uh, during the trade and after the trade, there will they, be recaps and there will be lessons. Um, the workshops, we do workshops uh, usually three to four times a week after the market closes, sometimes, sometimes on Saturdays. Um, so come into those free workshops and, and see what we do, a lot of great information there. Um, you know, get, get to know us. Read the chart of the week. Um, you know, say come to the workshops, come into the chat room, and uh, you know, kick the tires, so to speak. And um, you know, if you like us, maybe you want to go further. You know, we'll give you that choice. But right now, um, get the free access and, and see what it is that we do. A lot of us, I don't know, actually, probably every one of us look like this guy on this slide when we were starting out, you know. Um, th th this is a tough game, you know, it takes a lot of discipline to do it without an education. I guess, you know, like with anything else, you know, what can you do without an education? Um, you know, so if you're, if you're looking for that education, if you're frustrated with your results, if you've had some education, a lot of students that come to us have had education elsewhere, you know, and they, and, you know, they just say, I wish, I wish I would have found you guys first. Um, and as, as you know, Matt B said there, he was a graduate, after years of trial and error, I finally become, a, become successful in my trading. And even better yet, I understand why markets do the way they do. Thank you very much. Um, so get to know us. And my time is about over here in, in a minute. Um, you know, contact the counselor at pristine.com or support at pristine.com. Get the free access to the room. Come into our free workshops. Read our, our free information in the in the community, and uh, hopefully, uh, you know, you become part of the pristine family. Okay, guys, thank you for uh, spending this time with me. Uh, thanks to our our host here for ha for having me here. Uh, I'd love to come back again at one of our other. Uh, moderators come in and do a lesson on, on something else um, at some time in the future. So that being said, have a great weekend and hopefully we'll be talking to you soon. Thank you very much, Greg. And yes, we'll definitely love to have you back or, or one of your colleagues.